Welcome to Passion Unlimited Podcast. I am your host, psychotherapist, author, and founder of Fearless Love, Gianni Adamo. Did you know that although we have a lot more sex bombarding us in, through TV, internet, dating apps, and hookup sites, Fifty Shades of Grey, all the studies tell us that this generation is having a lot less sex than our grandmothers. And the studies are coming in also with this pandemic. Um, and it's telling us that even though the couples are more isolated, which has gives you the opportunity to have more sex, the pandemic is only slightly increasing um, that opportunity for couples to have more sex. And I would agree with that. And that's because as a marriage and couples expert, I get to see couples at all different stages of life. And I live here in South Florida, and I can tell you that this is a transient state. So we have individuals, couples, and families that move here from all parts of the country and other parts of the world. And for couples that come in and they have a happy and healthy marriage or relationship, they will continue to be healthy and happy. And whatever circumstances enter into their lives, whatever crisis, they already have the foundation to kind of stay together through the crisis, through the storm. So for couples who come to the state or to, or they pick up and leave and they start somewhere else, if they have issues of trust, let's just say, cause I'm from New Jersey. If you're coming from New Jersey and you have issues of trust in your relationship in New Jersey, guess what's gonna happen in Florida? Yeah, the same thing. You're gonna continue to have issues of trust in Florida. In fact, it's probably going to magnify because you no longer have the support system in place that you left behind. So actually a crisis, a transition, all of these things actually add to the distress and add to the division and the disconnection. So today's topic that I am covering will be how to enjoy more sex, deepen your connection, and sustain a more passionate relationship. So first, let's discuss that the, there, for individuals, there are some factors that uh, affect you sexually. And that we, we could start out with age. Depending on your age, your libido and your desire for sex is going to be a little higher or a little lower. So we know that the younger people have a much higher libido. They have a lot more testosterone. So couples um, in you know, the, in their 20s, let's say, who are younger are definitely having more sex than the older couples who may have a lower libido at this point. So also with that, the libido, it's important to recognize that if you once had a libido and it's now gone, that you probably need to check your hormones, especially if you're getting a little older. Um, as we move into our midlife and older life, our hormones change and we need to figure out what's happening with us hormonally because the sex drive, a great deal of it is driven by the testosterone, okay? Um, so also other factors that affect a healthy sex life would be if you have a medical condition, if you have chronic pain or chronic stress, all of that is going to affect how you crave or desire or you know want um, sexual intimacy. So all these things um, need to come under management. Excuse me. So if you have a chronic condition, it's important that you are under treatment and that you visit your doctor or a holistic practitioner to support you in bringing back up your feelings of rest and peace and reconnection with your body where you're not feeling all that pain and distress all the time. And the other thing that also um, affects how much sex you're having is your marital status. And surprise, surprise, singles are not having more sex. <laughs> it is the married couples who are having more sex. And even through this pandemic, it is 100% more the married couples who are having more sex than the singles or the unmarried couples. So marriage 
and the marital status status does matter if you are looking to have a healthy and long life in the sex department. Okay, so the next area I wanted to cover is, you know, getting people turned on. We need, we live in a world where everybody's overworked, overstressed, and then like you just expect your partner to just be turned on when you are turned on. Well, that doesn't really fly very well. It doesn't really fly for the women especially because because we're more driven with the estrogen, which is more of a collaborative and nurturing energy and, and hormone, we, we need a lot more to prepare us, to bring us to back to our bodies and to desire sex. So for now, I'm gonna to speak to the men first and then I'll speak to the ladies. Okay, so it's important for the pursuit to be present in your relationship. And I know that's kind of like, oh God, after even like just cohabit cohabitating couples who are not even married, because I get a whole bunch of cohabitating couples who are not married, the sex dives, like goes down after a certain amount of time. And what happens here is like nobody is pursuing. Well, somebody needs to pursue. If we're gonna get this on, if it's gonna get hot and keep it ablaze, Somebody needs to pursue, and hopefully everybody's going to be pursuing. Both of you are going to pursue, but somebody's got to start. <laughs> we got to start somewhere. So the guys, I'm going to start with you. And it is something that's important that you do need to preserve that. I know that there's a lot of you know, rejection that comes with being the one who takes the lead in pursuing um, but maybe there are ways that we can navigate around the rejections and increase the skill sets that will give you a yes instead of the no. So, okay, so basically here, what I'm gonna ask you guys to do is, don't just disappear into your devices and into your computer, into your streaming um, shows and TV and sports. You're gonna have to give your lady some attention because if you want more yeses when you pursue, she's gonna have to feel that you prioritized her and her needs and her well-being throughout that day, throughout that week. So it's important that you stay connected with your girl, with your lady, um, throughout the day and throughout the week. She needs to feel desired, she needs to feel beautiful, she needs to feel that she is supported that her feelings and her thoughts and ideas matter. So just by sending maybe quick little, a quick little note text throughout the day, you know, one's in the morning, maybe another one in the afternoon and staying connected with her allows her to feel like you are prioritizing her and that she matters. So just as simple as sending these little easy texts and nothing crazy, no problem solving, just, I was thinking of you or sending a cute little funny uh, post that makes her laugh. The other thing that I want to encourage you to do is to hug and kiss when you say hello and when you say goodbye. And in the evenings when you're home together, I want you to learn to be able to touch your lady and be able to kiss her and hug her and hold her. And then you just, a minute later, two minutes later, you walk away, you disengage, you let it go. You don't pursue anything further, you just walk away. And eventually in time, what this is gonna do is it's actually gonna help her to not feel like every time you touch her is because you want sex. Because that is like the biggest problem for just about every woman who has issues with sex at home with her, with her partner. and it's that normally every time her partner touches her, he touches her because he's got an end in mind and that would be the sex. And that makes her feel like an object, that makes her feel used. So if you hadn't paid attention to her throughout the day, giving her a little text, a little wink, a little funny joke, um, just an I love you, I appreciate you statement, and thank you so much for caring for the children and whatever else, then she feels like she's being taken for granted. And then, you know, then she's supposed to just turn on and have sex. So she doesn't feel 
beautiful or feminine at that point. So learn to touch, to hug and kiss and embrace. Hold that or maintain that for you know, the affection for a minute or two and then just walk away. This is gonna be so important that you guys can both retrain your brains to do that because you guys are getting retrained as well. Because I remember I had one of the guys in session, he's like, oh, this is all I have to do to turn her on. I'm like, I should have been doing this a long time ago. And he's like, so I can get her rewired. And I'm like, yeah, you're not just rewiring her, you're rewiring yourself because now you're, letting your brain know that every time you touch her, you don't need to be turned on to have sex. You can just touch her and then walk away and leave her alone. So the brain is getting rewired on both sides. You're going to be more patient as the guy and the woman is going to be more relaxed. All right. So ladies, I also want to speak with you. Okay, just as you feel wanted and desired um, when he pursues you, the guy feels the same way. He feels wanted and desired when you pursue him and it makes him more confident, just like it makes you more secure when he pursues you. Okay, um, so many times in relationship, um, we don't prioritize our intimate life. And this is a major problem that we have in our modern world, that there are so many distractions that come in and wedge themselves and block intimacy. So I'm also going to ask you that if you want hotter, better sex in your relationship, in your marriages, then you're going to have to like bracket off the time that you're going to be involved with your devices and your streaming shows and TV and PC and computer stuff, like all of your devices, you need to bracket that off. So you might bracket that, oh, put it away um, when you sit down for dinner. Put your uh, phones away, turn off the TV, turn off the computers. If anything, turn on uh, your Pandora, turn on the devices only to stream music. I don't allow any distractions to come in at the time that you guys are sharing a meal. Let it be a time of peace. Let it be a time of connection, of sharing, that you can say, hey, what was your high point for today? What was your low, low point for today? What's one appreciation you know, that you have for your life today? Oh my gosh, isn't that wonderful? Like, the, two of you are sitting there or the family sitting there and everybody's going around the table and sharing their highs and their lows and one appreciation for today. How amazing is that? Then after you eat your meal, you guys can clean up, you know, the kitchen and then maybe you can sit around the table again and play a game or paint a piece of artwork together. Finger painting. You don't need to have stuff, you know, whatever. Do a project that does not involve turning on the television or being back on the computer. Every one of us now has increased our time on the blue screen with all of our Zooming meetings and education and everything is happening on the computer. So we need to turn that off and put it away. Take out the board games, take out the card games and start connecting. So once you are done with your family time or just your play time together as a couple, play time together as a family, you could put the children to bed, you could you know, read them a book. Now it's time for mom and dad. So now what? <laughs> now what, do we turn on the television now? Cause this is what everybody does. And then we have the TV in our bedroom as well. That's again, a distraction, I actually, recommend to remove the TV from your bedroom. Do not add any more devices to your bedroom. Your bedroom should be sacred. It should be a place that you sleep and have sex and that's it. Those are the two things that you can do, make love or sleep in your bedroom. Everything else should be outside of that bedroom. Um, oh, some other things that guys 
you can do to help support your wife or your girlfriend is to always be a partner with her in home management. It is like so freaking sexy, like for almost every woman, when she sees her husband or her boyfriend vacuuming, folding laundry, cleaning bathrooms. Oh my God, it's like the biggest turn on on the planet for most women. So don't forget, you're gonna, you're gonna get plenty of score there when you're able to do that without asking for permission or asking for too much direction and you kind of just do it and surprise her. Um, all of those things add um, to where she's feeling valued and loved and cared for. So for women, I always work with the women as well in this area in reference to helping them get back to their bodies. For most women now, we are in the career world, we have careers, we've got jobs, and we are in our thinking brain. Our thinking brain not only does nothing for our sex drive, it actually decreases our sex drive. It takes us as far as possible from feeling sexy and beautiful um, when we are in problem solving and fixing things, that's our masculine energy. So we have to actually come back to our bodies in order for us to come back to our feminine selves. So we need to kind of leave the work at the office. And if we're working from home, once we shut down the computer, like that is it. You're done with work. No more of the problem solving. Stop carrying so much weight upon your shoulders and allow yourself to bring your issues, especially if they're home management or whatever, the kids, financial, bring that to your husband and bring those issues for him to bring, to bring into problem solving. And I want you to come back to you. What does that look like? Well, what that looks like is once again, self-care practices and rituals. So I want you to be able to, you know, either get involved with yoga or your own hobby. Um, having rituals around bedtime, which would mean like maybe a, a bath or a shower with warm water, aromatherapy, putting on some nice lotions, brushing your hair, brushing your teeth, um, feeling like you're back into your body again. Some ladies feel like they need to go for a jog in the early evening to come back to their bodies sometimes a massage so you can not sometimes that actually works out really well so you could ask your partner to give you a massage um, and again when you massage your partner men it does not need to lead to sex because if it does she's never going to ask you to, mas to massage her body so please learn to touch her without it leading to sex that is like rule number one to make sure things stay hot in the relationship um, so, so once you guys put the children to bed and the devices are turned off and the woman is involved in her own self-care rituals and her bath and her, maybe her yoga, her meditation, maybe she's journaling, then I'm going to ask the ladies here because usually we're the most fickle ones in the relationship when it comes to sex. I'm going to ask you to invite your husband, invite your man into your space, whether it is in the bathroom, whether it's in your bedroom, or maybe you come back into the living room where he may be watching some TV or doing some more computer stuff. I want you to invite him into your inner world, into that beautiful, intimate space um, that only we as women can create, uh, this feminine, sensual place, and we can invite our partners in or our partner in. So I, I'm going to ask you, especially for those women who, you know, have the difficulty of feeling turned on and, and wanting to have sex, I want you to lead in this area because usually the men get turned off because they've asked uh, and initiated so much that they, then they turn off and they don't want to be taking any more risks. So if you, as a lady has been, you know, if you had a difficult time, you know, feeling desired and wanted and needed, I want you to Create your bedtime rituals, and I want you to initiate just inviting him into your space. And it doesn't mean that you're going to have sex. It just means that you're going to allow yourself to be vulnerable, intimate, and sensual with him. And you guys can read to each other, play with one another, massage each other, 
um, just have pillow talks. You know how sexy that is just to like turn around and just have pillow talks. And in time, I want you then to start exploring together sexually and touching each other's body. But first I want you to kind of like come back to just feeling safe and essential and intimate realm without the sex. Once you're feeling comfortable in that area and reconnected there, then I want you to start playing and having fun and touching each other. Um, and you can explore with different things and different um, um, toys, whatever you guys have interest in. So everything and anything you guys have interest in, go for it. Check it out. Explore. I'm like, if you don't like it, you just say no. <laughs> That's it. Okay. And so, so the other thing is, guys, to keep the communication going with your lady, um, you know, check in with her, ask her how she's doing, ask her, you know, is she satisfied with your sex life? And ladies, the same thing. Ask your man, are you satisfied with our sex life? And if you do ask that question, which I think everybody should always ask, not every time you're together, but every so often check in, especially if you've had some huge life transitions and maybe sex has waned off and maybe it's not as often as you guys once had. I want you to check in, like, are you satisfied with our sex life? And I want you to check, excuse me, to listen. When you ask that, I want you to listen. Don't justify, don't give excuses, don't add anything. Just listen. It's a gift you're offering your partner to just be able to hear their perspective. You could also ask your partner, what do you enjoy about our sex life the most? Because that's a lot of fun. Because if they enjoy the foreplay, which most people enjoy the foreplay, and by the way, a lot of times it is the men that come into therapy and say, you know, like, we don't have foreplay and I would like to have more foreplay. So everybody usually enjoys foreplay. So anyways, what do you enjoy the most about our relation, excuse me, about our uh, sex life or our intimacy? What do you wish was different or more? And again, you want to ask this question and be open to hearing everything and not defend. Many times it's just they want to be hugged, held, kissed. They want a French kiss. Um, they want to snuggle. It's Really, sometimes it's just that simple that what the partner is really looking for to feel more satisfied in this area of sexual intimacy. And also I want you to ask, what can I do to make our sex life more satisfying for you? And again, you're going to hear a lot of things. And there, again, it, most of the times it's very simple things from, you know, let's take more bath times together. Let's play more. Let's have more fun. Let's go out more. If you're listening to this podcast and you're like, I can't even fathom, I can't even think about having sex with my partner. I really have no desire then you really need to pick up the phone and call me or another therapist that specializes in relationship work, especially if you recognize that you're just very resentful right now um, with your partner and you have felt unloved, uncared for, unheard, unseen, unsupported. And so now, you know, you don't even know how to connect with this person. You feel even anxious, the idea of thinking of like getting back intimately with your partner please reach out um, to a counselor like myself who specializes in couples work to help you through this and navigate out of that. So to keep the relationship hot and sexy, the relationship has to be intentional. Relationships and healthy marriages are not organic. They are not organic. They are intentional. 
So keep on listening to season three of Passion Unlimited podcast as I continue to support you to go from surviving to thriving in life, love, and relationships. Please subscribe. I am available. Passion Unlimited podcast is available on all the podcast state podcast stations and networks. And it's also available on YouTube. There, it's under Fearless Love, which is my practice name. And you can join my Facebook group called Passion Unlimited Podcast. And you can re uh, request a free 15-minute consultation through my website. That's fearlesslove.net. And just click on the free 15 minutes consultation. I just have one other announcement, and it's that I am creating my... Um, I'm creating my audiobook for From Love Trauma to Fearless Love. And that audiobook should be available for Halloween in another month and a half. Um, and I look forward to bringing that, this audio to the world. I am partnering up with a voiceover actress in California. And she and I, well, I have selected some or some beautiful music to infuse in the audiobook, some instrumental tangos. Um, we're looking to make bring some sounds, not only the, the story being told, but we're gonna have we're gonna infuse it with sounds and other things to make it come alive as I had envisioned it when I wrote this book. Because when I wrote the book, I envisioned that it would be turned into a, a movie or a series or some sort of um, Broadway type of production. So we're going to start doing that with the audio book. And so I'm very excited. So anyways, till next time, hopefully you'll tune in next week for our, ne for our next episode of Passion Unlimited podcast. <laughs>